Hey guys, welcome back to another flashlight review. And today we're going to be looking at the Wuben A1, this gigantic flashlight. And as you guys know, I do own a lot of different flashlights and it's quite rare that I get a light that just makes me drop everything. But the Wuben A1, certainly one of those lights. And this is definitely a type of light that you want to get if you want to go all out just get the biggest light possible, the most throwiest light out there. And it's a gigantic flashlight that produces 20,000 lumens. And, you know, that doesn't sound like much when you compare it to some of those 50 to 100K lumen flutters. However, the A1 does come with this unique four times SBT 90.2 configuration and that makes it optimized for long range performance so the Wuben A1 is a legitimate searchlight that puts everything else to shame and I've always found personally that high candela or intensely focused beams are just more impressive than a big wall of light so let's have a look at what you get in the box all right so this is the box that the Wuben A1 comes in quite a large hard case as you can see and then inside you've got this foam padded section in the center also on the top of the box the lid as well and you get one of these which is a shoulder strap okay i think this is actually very much required for a light of this size i have used it once when i went out to do some bean shots of just taking it off and here it's a couple of spare o-rings you do get a charger here as well. So this one actually connects onto the back of the flashlight. And yeah, chunky sort of charger, but it does charge pretty quickly. You've got these adapter plugs as well. So I've currently got the Australian one on, but you've got, yeah, US plug, EU plug, and a UK plug here on the side as well. Probably never use those couple of spare screws as well and these are just some spare screws in case you lose the ones that attach the handle to the flashlight in this little thing here there was actually the remote control that goes onto the flashlight itself i'll show you that in a moment now that was the case that came basically the box that stores the charger okay but apart from that that's all you get in the box so this here is the battery pack that comes with the Wuben A1. I'll just bring it up a bit closer to the camera. You can see just connects up the top there like that. And you can actually open this up and look at the port cover. And just what's underneath the port cover here as well. I'll go into that a bit more detail later. And this here is the handle I was telling you about with the actual remote control that you can just slide out like this or just leave it in there if you want. So this allows you to control the light by the remote, obviously. And I think that's a good option if you're planning to mount the light to your car or just holding the light via this handle so you have control over it still. Okay, because actually behind the light, that's where the actual physical switches are. Okay, guys, here is a funny little comparison. I've got the Wuben A1 next to my Immolent mr90 here and the convoy l8 and i remember a time when i used to think these lights were absolutely gigantic but next to the a1 as you can see they look tiny and if you flip them up like this to see the bezel and the reflector you can see geez it's <laughs> i mean it's it's just quite absurd okay comparing that one to each other it's almost having like four of these l8s in one light this thing is one monster of a flashlight really struggling to even get it underneath the camera so you can see it properly it's three kilograms okay and that's with the battery pack like i said it's a good thing that it does come with a shoulder strap as well and you can see that there are actually multiple points on the body to attach the shoulder strap so these little circular bits here underneath the head one part of the shoulder strap and then of course the tail cap here you can see a bunch of different 
sort of holes running around the back so you can attach it in a variety of different ways. The overall machining is top notch. You've got no inconsistencies, sharp spots, anything like that. And you can see also that we've have included these little cutouts on the head, these cutout fins on the head and underneath there, even near to the start of the battery tube over here. And I think that really helps to increase surface area, to dissipate heat better in a large light like this with just these four SBTs, 90.2s, and even small things like that are really going to help. Good to see that there's even some knurling here on the battery tube itself. I haven't held the light without the handle. I just feel it's a lot more comfortable with the handle. This little thing that sticks out the side there is a radio receiver just under the head, and that pairs with the remote control that I showed you before. It's on top of the handle. I find the handle really useful when you're operating that light on turbo or on the fifth step where it starts to get a little bit warm underneath the head and actually quite hot on the head itself. On the other side of the light, you can see here there's actually a couple of physical switches there. Little look under the bezel and you can see here those four SBT 90.2 LEDs and the bezel appears to be made of anodized aluminium. It's not stainless steel. So you've got this quad reflector design there, the SBT 90.2 sitting at the bottom. There's these black gaskets surrounding them as well, just to clean up the beam profile a little bit. There's also some anti reflective glass over the front. I did demonstrate this before, but you can unscrew the battery pack from the head just. Yeah, just basically unscrew counterclockwise. And you can also remove this back section here in order to access the charging port. And you've also got these five little LEDs that indicate um, how charged the light is. So at the moment, they're all illuminated because I only just charged it recently. But what you can do as well is you can charge external devices by fast charging. You can plug in a a device there and just press that button and it will start charging. The battery is rated at 33,600 milliamp hours and it can fast charge in less than five hours. All right, so we're going to go through the UI, just going to show you how the light works. So basically to turn on the flashlight, you just need to press that power button here on the side. Okay, just that one there. So one click assuming that the light is not locked and it now remembers the last mode that you left it in. So what you can also do is uh, you can press and hold that button, yeah, that power button for strobe. You can also do it while the light is off, sort of press and hold to access that strobe. Okay, now this second button, what it does once the light's on, it actually changes the different steps. So it just goes from basically step one to five. Okay, now if you want turbo, all you have to do is just press and hold that button at any stage. Okay, and now it goes straight to turbo and holds it. Okay, but if the light is off and you press and hold that button, the first button here, it only activates momentary turbo. If you click this power button four times, okay, the light locks. A couple of flashes just indicate that it's uh, locked. Okay, now it doesn't make any any flashes at all just on the power button. If you want to unlock it, it's another four clicks. Okay, and that light is unlocked. And what you can do as well is if you want this LED out the front to indicate that it's on or, you know, just so that it's easier to find in the night or something like that, you press it three times and uh, you get this kind of glowing blue effect here, as you can see. All right, so I ran a bunch of ceiling bounce tests with the Wuben A1, and this is the first one. As you can see here, the light starts off at 100%, and as soon as you turn it on, it basically starts to slowly step down. Okay, it's quite a significant step down. By the three minute mark, you can see the light is on about a third of its output, and ran this test to about the 10 minute mark and switched it off. This is the A1 on the fifth step. So 12,000 lumens, and you can see here, yeah, pretty much between 90 and 100% output all the way to just after five minutes. And at that point, the light steps down to about 
percent. Okay, and that's at a seven minute mark. I ran a third ceiling bounce test here on the fourth step, so four thousand lumens, and you can see the light holds hundred percent for the duration of the test. Here are a bunch of readings that I took with my Opal Light Master Pro, and you can see. Here on turbo, now I've measured these at eight meters. All the calculations are based on eight meters. And I got 2,733 meters of throw on turbo. Absolutely amazing figures there. And you can see even on the fourth step, it's over a kilometer, fifth step, two kilometers. But given that I didn't see a step down on step four, I think that's a pretty good mode to have if you want to have that search light feature. I don't want to obviously use up the batteries too quickly. CRI ranged from 64 all the way to 73. CRI tended to decrease as the power was stepped up. And you can see here, CCT ranged from 4,800 all the way to 6,800 on turbo. And you can see here, there's that pattern of increasing temperature or a cooler white color as you step up the power. The Wuben A1 produces a really large hot spot with ample amounts of spill. And what I found was that you could see all around that target point very easily. When you use LEP flashlights or even smaller throwers, I find that they just illuminate that main target point, but you can't really see much around them because the spill doesn't reach all the way into the distance, but no issues here with the A1. So some considerations that you need to be aware of. Now, this isn't your usual EDC flashlight. The thing weighs nearly three kilograms, quite bulky too, if you haven't noticed, but I'm actually glad that it is quite bulky because it's the only way to get those throw figures and sustained output without burning out those four high powered LEDs. And the A1 is marketed as a search and rescue slash exploration or off-road light that you can mount to your car so the, the extra weight and the rugged construction does make sense in this case the second consideration is that the light is pretty expensive okay but this is one of a kind and i tend to be quite wary of lots of these high lumen flashlights as i've read reports of components failing me prematurely just due to lack of proper heat sinking but with the wuben a1 i do feel more confident just with the amount of material that the LEDs are surrounded with heat sinked and you know effective temperature regulation as well. The third consideration, of course, is that battery pack, that built-in proprietary battery pack. It's not something that you can install your own 21700 cells. So yeah, if your pack goes, you're gonna have to buy another one from Wuben. So all in all, if you are looking for the ultimate searchlight and thrower. And given you have some extra cash lying around, I think this is well and truly going to scratch that itch. And it's definitely going to be difficult finding anything that tops this unless you're going for a large lumen flutter, but you're not going to get that high candela output. Now, comparing it to all of my other throwers, nothing even comes remotely close to illuminating a large distant area. So if you're interested in getting one, I have a special discount voucher for the A1 that you can access below in the video description. If you have any questions and comments as well, just let me know down in the comment section. I'm sure I've missed something out. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a big favor and click the like button. It really helps me to get it out to more people. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest flashlight reviews and news, make sure you subscribe. All right, I've got the Wuben A1 and I'm just gonna start it straight off on turbo. Oh my God. I mean, it's hitting those houses even at the back there. You can even see into the water. Um, and you can see over to the right as well, there is the little power line Running around. Just switch over to some of the other modes. So uh, this is the lowest mode. Step two, step three, step four, step five.
and turbo. Slight difference between the fifth step and turbo. Well, quite a significant difference actually. We've been A1 and I'm just gonna try to target this this uh, building across. Incredible. All right, Wubin A1 on turbo. Oh my God. Oh my God, look at that. This is <laughs> incredible. Go for a walk so you can see what the beam pattern looks like.